Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I love to listen to the Quran from others. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud kept reciting the Quran from Surah An-Nisa until he reached the Quranic verse in which, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا how would it be if we bring from every nation a witness and we bring you a witness over these people? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shed tears and Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud turned to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and saw him shedding tears. In many situations, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the best example in dealing with the Qur'an. So is this the way we deal with the Qur'an? Do we read the Qur'an? Do we spend time reading the Qur'an by day and by night? Do we spend time reading some explanations of the Qur'an, some tafsir, some tafsir in the kathir, which is translated fully into English? Do we spend time trying to grasp and, and understand the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to us? This was the case with the Prophet sallallahu What was the case with the Salaf, the great righteous predecessors? The great righteous predecessors followed in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would do, his Sahaba used to do, and also the, the successors used to do, and they set great examples. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him as related in Sahih of Ibn Hibban he said that whenever a man of us memorized Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran we would hold him in high esteem he would be a great man in our eyes so they would respect anyone who would memorize the Quran also, Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib. Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib is the great imam of the successors. We have what we call a, a hadith mursal. A hadith which the tabi'i narrates directly from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa without mentioning the sahabi. The tabi'i or the successor didn't see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the, the scholars of hadith would regard any hadith that doesn't have the Sahabi in its chain of transmitters as a defective hadith. But they said that all the hadith narrated by Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib all the way to the Prophet sallallahu are sahih ones because of the status of Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib and his authenticity and his reliability in narrating the hadith. Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib used to teach Quran and Sunnah to the people. And he had a lot of students, and he was held in high respect, he was respected by all the people, including the caliphs, the princes, and everybody, because he was a bearer of the, the prophetic knowledge, the knowledge of the Prophet ﷺ. A lot of people came to engage his daughter, Sa'id ibn Musayyib, he has a beautiful story. Sayyid Musayyib used to teach knowledge and he, and he had a beautiful girl who was knowledgeable in the Quran and knowledgeable in the Sunnah and everybody would speak about her and everybody wished to marry that girl. So Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik, Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik ibn Marawan was the crown prince. Was, 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 would be, he would be the caliph or the king after a while. And his father, Abdul Malik, sent for Sa'id to engage his daughter to his son, Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik. And Sa'id ibn Musayyib, because he loved the people of the Qur'an, he loved the people who learned the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and who narrated the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And for him, everyone else is lower than these people who read the Qur'an, who study the Qur'an and who memorize the Qur'an, he said no. 
he refused to marry his daughter to Al Walid ibn Abdul Malik, the crown prince. And he had a student, his name was Abdullah ibn Abi Wada'a. And Abdullah ibn Abi Wada'a was absent on that date. On that day, Abdullah ibn Abi Wada'a was not there. So Sayyid ibn Musayyib asked about him. Two days passed, three days. And when he came, he said, what, where were you? I missed you, man. So he said, Abdullah ibn Abi Wada'a, he said, my wife died and I was busy burying her and taking care of her, of her body and doing every, everything, funeral procession and everything. So he said to him, would you love to marry another woman? And the man, for him, he was astonished. How come people marry him while he doesn't have enough money? He's a poor student of knowledge. So Abdul Malik, uh, so Sayyid Ibn Musayyib said, I marry you. I marry you, my daughter. And the man couldn't believe it. And he went home, not believing himself, thinking that it was a dream or a very night vision or something. That how come Sayyid Ibn Musayyib, who refused to marry his daughter to kings, and, uh, and princes, and he wants to marry me his daughter. He couldn't believe it. And when it was night, he was fasting, and he was breaking his fast, and he listened and he heard the door knocked. Somebody was knocking the door. And he said, who is at the door? And Sayyid Ibn Sayyid said, Sayyid. So he couldn't imagine that his scholar, his sheikh, would come to visit him. Because Sa'id ibn Musayyib, for 40 years, he would be seen between the masjid and his house. He would not waste his time. He, would, his, he was busy all the time teaching knowledge and taking care of his family between the masjid and his house. And he didn't miss takbirat al-ihram. For, for years, for 40 years, Sayyid ibn Musayyib, may Allah be pleased with him and may Allah have mercy on him. He would never look at the back of a praying person because he was always in the front line. Because Rasulullah said, if people know what is the status of the Adhan and what's the status of standing in the first line in prayer, people would draw a lot, or do, draw lots in order to take that position or take that place. So we couldn't imagine that his, his Sheikh Sa'id ibn Musayyib is visiting him at home and knocking at his door. So we tried to think about all his friends that were called Sa'id. And he never imagined that it was his Sheikh. And when he opened the door, he found his Sheikh. And it was something amazing for him that his Sheikh comes to his modest house. And he was very poor. And he said he thought that his sheikh thought it over and deliberated the matter and thought it would not be possible or not be suitable that he would marry his daughter to that poor student of knowledge. So he said, okay, whatever my sheikh says, I will accept it. So he said, you are a single man and I hate it that you spend the night alone and he pushed his daughter, he presented, he introduced his daughter to him, and he said, this is your wife. 